Welcome to Overcome America Hair Loss. My name is Valerie Fuentes. I'm your host, and today I am with Jeffrey Paul. He's an author, motivational speaker, and international expert in women's hair restoration and replacement. He helps men and women of all ages with hair thinning solutions and has trained thousands of professionals nationwide. Through his center and nonprofit, Wix for Kids, Jeffrey Paul has helped countless women and children restore their hair and truly live again. Thank you, Jeff, for uh, uh, accepting my invitation. I am so happy to have you here. Well, I am glad to be here, and I am excited for what you're doing for the population of not only the consumers that are going to be watching this summit, uh, Valerie, but a lot of professionals. We actually, you know, uh, put the you know the flag up to let all the professionals know what you're teaching is for both sides of the fence. It's not just the consumer who is dealing with the hair loss, but the professionals that want to either care for that or that are caring for them, and you're sharing so much unique information. I'm really excited about what's happening and what's gonna happen out of this. Thank you. So uh, today we're gonna to talk a very important topic for me, uh, which was part of like what helped me get to the other side, which is our self-talk, how we view ourselves, and how we think others see us, because at the end of the day, there are three, three different views, right? Is how we see each other, how others actually see us and how we think they're looking at us because we have a perception that is not necessarily true. And you explain this very well in your book. Um, so I wanted to, to talk about that. Um, so let's start with those three things. Can you explain us a little bit more? Yeah, you know where that came from? Out of my chapter 16 in my book, I put together, uh, as you know, some image consultants, some body uh, form psychologists, and a lot of really people that are in the understanding of the neurological effects that we go through. But you know where I learned it the most? When I was doing runway models in New York, Milan, California, you name it, we did covers of magazines. It was exciting to work with these beautiful people and just to be a backstage with them, except backstage, they weren't beautiful. Backstage, they didn't feel beautiful. We had to pump them up as the hairdressers and the makeup artists to make them get able to walk and strut down the runway. So most of the times people think that those women or those men are absolutely have it all together. But what's chattering within their mind, the thoughts and feelings, emotions that are really taking them captive is really what they're going through. And it doesn't matter whether you have hair, don't have hair. It doesn't matter whether you're a runway model or not. The truth of it is, as we think, so we are, is the Proverbs. And I really believe that is so true, so true. James Allen wrote a book on that very thing. As a man or woman thinks, they shall be. And it's so important for someone going through hair loss because mm -hmm. not only do you have the chatter going on, no matter what you look like in the mirror, but then you also have the hair loss and the hair thinning, which we learned, and you'll read that in the book, of course you have, but read that in the book, that they have now proven that there is another chemistry that goes off in our body that is negatively affecting our hair loss and it increases the ability for us to lose more and continue. And you can take Valiums, you can, you can do whatever you want to do until you change the chatter in your head right. and renew your mind. It's not going to change. Right. You know, and you're bringing up something really important that I've actually heard uh, in this past week is that when we are diagnosed or when we find out that, I mean, we already know that we're having hair loss, right? But then we go to the doctor and then we get a diagnosis that makes it even worse because then we we already put a name to it and then we start with the anxiety and the panic and it's almost like a snowball effect of you're more stressed so you lose more hair so you're watching more hair so you're more stressed and it's just it keeps going and only us have the power to stop that right because no, no, nobody else can do that for you and I, and I think that what you're doing and, and what we do and a lot of the people that you're introducing your, your viewing audience to introduce them to is mm -hmm. that you need coaches. You know, if you're going to go physically work on your, your, your diet or you're physically going to work on your career or you're going to physically work on whatever muscles, you go get typically a trainer or at least get a YouTube that'll help you coach you through the process because it's very difficult to do it on your on yourself on your uh, all alone and people feel like that they're all alone who do i talk to about my hair loss you know you're a, you're a coach that helps people do that we have a coaching system through renewing you doing the same thing and so many of the people that you're bringing on 
you need, and I, I want this message really to go out to those that are watching us, mm -hmm. you're not alone and you have a lot of people that you can plug into and you're bringing them to, to, the, uh, to the surface because some of these people I didn't even recognize and after 40 years, I thought I'd kind of gone around the map a little bit to meet most of the better people, to coach, to, to do hair replacement. To, but it's so important that we don't, don't think that we are alone, that we don't have to do it on our own. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I learned from working with the psychologists on our team while writing the book is the fact that there are three entities of, of uh, psychology that go into image that can negatively affect the cause and effect that we have, such as mm -hmm. aging. Some people are so distraught over aging, they can't deal with it. It actually puts them into a depression. Mm -hmm. uh, obesity or, or weight, it creates, again, another depression. I, you know, if I diet, I don't lose the weight, I'll just eat a, a cupcake, because who cares at this point? The reality is now the third one is hair loss. And psychologists all over the country, and psychiatrists, in fact, are showing many of us that are in the field that this is a real issue with people. And we need to help them through what you said a minute ago. Help mm -hmm. them take captive their thoughts help them learn how to do that and it's not by just repeating something over and over again I'm, i love meditation i have written a couple books on journaling a lot of that type of thing but it's more than that it's really first recognizing what is being said inside your head and i do a, a program called looking in the mirror uh and saying in the mirror i am beautiful i am precious i'm wonderfully made and all of the affirmations but looking at yourself in your personal eyes deep not just glazing at your face looking right. deep into your eyes and truly looking into the, the well which is the wellspring of your life which is your heart and speak into it because mm -hmm. we really develop a faith consciousness through our hearing and can I tell you a story that really this came from that I think I've never told the story very often, at least that I can remember. We had a youth group that we would teach um, biblical principles on how to live their life. You know, just, but these are kids. They had to learn how to live their life. And we teach them how to journal and how to truly tap into their inner self. One night, a young cup, a little girl came in with three girls helping her down the stairway to, to our lower level. And I could tell that she was either going through cancer or something. She was just... Valerie, she was like a skeleton. Mm -hmm. and she came in, I put a seat right in front of us, and I said, honey, come on over, sit over here. I said, what's going on? And she says, I, I, I'm going to die. And, you know, the whole 80-some kids there just kind of, you know, went into silence. I go, why do you think you're going to die? Do you have cancer or some kind of disease? She goes, no. She says, I have anorexia. And I've caused my body to close down so badly that I can't take on nutrition, and I just don't want to live anymore this way. Wow. Well, that created such a silence, Valerie, and such an entombment. I knew that it was a teachable moment. And I asked her, do you want to die? And she goes, no. And she started to cry. And everybody thought, oh, Jeffrey, why are you asking her such hard questions? But I knew where I was going with this. Mm -hmm. And I said, you don't want to die, but why is it that you, you, you're, you're, you're just giving up? She goes, because I don't know how to live. So mm -hmm. I said, all right, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go home. I want you to get naked in front of privately in front of your mirror mm -hmm. and i want you to look in that mirror and i want you to take and i wrote mm -hmm. out biblical principles that you're beautiful you're precious you're wonderfully made all of the issues that are truly uh, inspirational and what i did is i said repeat these every day looking into your eyes down into your heart and she said but i i don't look beautiful and i turned her chair around Valerie, literally, and I said to the young lady, tell these young people that are your age, what do you see when you look at yourself in the mirror? And she said, I just see an ugly, ugly pig. She said, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just ugly. Well, this again took a, an awe over the audience because it was like, how is this possible? I turned her back around and I said, you're beautiful, you're precious, and I want you to promise me that you'll do this exercise either until you die or till you live. And she stopped her crying. She had a little sparkle for the moment. And she goes, I'll do that. And, but I'm tired and I need to go home now because she just was exhausted. She, I mean, we were talking about maybe 70 pounds. So they helped her out and carried her. I'd love to say the next week or the next month that she came through the door, jumping up and down and was living. But three years later, another group of girls came into our, our study and she, came over to me this young lady came over to me and she goes you don't remember me do you and i go you know i usually remember every face i've ever seen 
any of her conversation I've had, but not names. I don't remember your face. I don't remember you. She goes, I'm the little girl. <clears throat> it chokes me up every time I hear this, these words. Uh, but she said, I'm the little girl that you gave the affirmations to that had anorexia. And I went home and did what you said to do. I lived and now I'm in a full-time ministry of helping children who have anorexia and bulimia. Wow. Do the same thing that you shared to me. And that's why I'm living today. That's the power that we have when we take captive these thoughts. But she would have possibly passed away if somebody didn't intervene with the, the coaching methods and the abilities to help her see herself as mm -hmm. God sees her. Beautiful, precious, wonderful. Mm -hmm. But it still takes someone to help and coach them through the process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, and I think when, when we're going through hair loss, the, the first thing that we do is isolate ourselves, mm -hmm. um, which, like you, know, like you said, it doesn't help. And what we need to do is try to connect with people. And I know it's hard because I've been there. You just want to hide. You don't want to show anybody what you're going through. But the moment when you lean in and just, just share yourself, like mm -hmm. that disappears i want to say like you, that fear disappears you just you just faced what's happening right which is your hair loss so the moment you speak about it it's already out so what are you afraid of and i'm not saying go do an announcement because you don't have to do that but just talk to one person you know baby steps one person at a time talk to your best friend talk to your to your family your significant other and by the way, I think the significant other is a, it's a really harsh one, uh, especially for young people. But um, I do think, and I truly believe that the moment you, it comes out of your mouth, it disappears, right? It's out here. It's not here in your head. It's, it's out here. Um, think about the two things you just described. Yeah. Once I acknowledge the thoughts that I'm thinking about myself, and I acknowledge that I'm not going to think that way anymore. And when I find someone that I can talk to out of words out of my mouth, so I've captured this, I've acknowledged this, and now I capture and share this, I am creating a force within us that causes, this word is so important, causes transformation by the renewing of your mind. No longer the mind that may have grown up with alopecia or you're living with a thyroid problem or you're living with hair loss for whatever reason, you've created a transformation, a new mind to start to see yourself beautiful as you are, with hair, without hair, with a hair replacement, whatever it is. But it changes, it transforms you like the butterfly. I wrote another book called The Metamorphosis where I talk about this ugly little caterpillar that feels like he's just, you know, none loved by everybody and he meets a beautiful butterfly. And that beautiful butterfly then shares the secret of metamorphosis, which is to go into a cocoon and begin to recite these five words and five statements over and over again, just like I did with that little girl. And she ended up, the caterpillar goes into the cocoon and comes out a beautiful butterfly. But here's the best news. Mm -hmm. After that caterpillar became a butterfly, it was on a little leaf waiting you know, to do something. What do I do with this new bee? And the other butterfly came back and said, now you know your purpose is to go tell other caterpillars that there's a beautiful butterfly inside of them. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And, you know, going back to the affirmations and all that, I, I one of the things the way I started, because it was really just the beginning of my, my journey to the other side, was telling myself that I'm not my hair. And I will do that every morning because the morning was the hardest part. In the morning, you know, you're trying to get ready to, to go to work and... I would spend hours in the mirror just feeling sorry for myself and being in the present. How do, how do I handle this? What do I use? You see, do I use the spray? Do I blow dry it? You know, just hours criticizing myself, number one, right? Because we're having that inner chat of something's wrong with me. Nobody's going to love me. What am I going to do? So I had to shift that conversation that I had with myself to you're not your hair. I had to start looking at myself and like making the distinction of that my body like i'm not my body i'm not my hair right. and then from then i went to affirmations on self-love of you know you're beautiful just the way you are and you're amazing all those things but it was it, I, I had to first make the distinction of my not being my hair right. well i'll tell you what um i've got another gift i'm going to give the listening audience but we'll save save that to the end okay but it's an extra gift but in turn disappointment really 
causes a lot of us to trip when we're trying to go through this learning skill of transformation, right? Mm -hmm. when, it, when we go to someone, like you said, reach out to somebody and share with them. So you go to a doctor and let's say that a doctor is not sensitive. Let's say that a doctor is not compassionate. Let's say the doctor is really not you know, kind with his words or her words. And they say, you have alopecia, go get a wig. And those are words that are quoted in my book of real people have been told that. The stories of the women that have gone through those type of situations, they t tell in my book and some of the profiles, they sat in front of doctor's offices crying for over an hour. Or the purchasing of a bag full of every product under the sun, hoping that it would work and all these things and, and the continued disappointment. And Dr. Joel Getch, one of the psychologists who work with, said that disappointment creates such a, uh, a void that you almost won't believe anybody that tells you anything. So it creates this kind of quandary that you're in. When you break out of it like you did, when you really started to look in the mirror that you shared with us, and you began to really call out out loud those very things, it begins to develop the transformation principle, which is I begin to see myself different. I begin to think of myself different. I begin to speak of myself different. And I'm hearing myself speak. Suddenly you become your own army. And you become incredibly powerful. And I, you know, we deal with cancer patients that use this methodology, not just because of their hair loss, but because of their issue of what their fears are, their anxieties, and that chatter going on. And so often there's another thing that happens to a lot of women especially that maybe don't have cancer, so to say. They have hair loss. They feel the guilt of being concerned about their hair. And here's what I continue to tell them, that your hair is not attached only to the follicle. It's attached to your femininity, to your inner beauty, to your romance, to your femininity, and all these things. So don't feel guilty. It's not about vanity. It's not about beauty. It's about truly the blessing of being the best you can be. And Michelangelo's quote that is really close to my heart, he said, when there's a masterpiece, the masterpiece needs to be framed with a beautiful, beautiful frame that fits the masterpiece. Or if the frame is out of order, then the masterpiece is lost. And I say that because so often we have to frame ourselves first on how we see ourselves. Then find a hairdresser like you have or someone who comes to us to, in our private practice. Then what we put on them is beautiful because so often if that work is not done, and I'm sure you can relate to this, if that work is not done in the inner beauty first, you can put the most beautiful $5,000 hair piece on somebody with virgin beautiful hair with just absolutely incredible and turn them around and they don't see a thing different. And like the anorexia girl, no matter how her body began to become shrunk into 70 pounds, she still saw herself heavy. She saw herself fat. And the reality is our mind sees beyond what we really, really are seeing in the mirror. And that's why learning to be transformed by the renewing of our mind is a coaching process that I believe in, in my consultations, even before we concern ourselves about getting hair, that's gonna come but it's really going inside and finding out where they're at in the mirror and then helping them out of that point. Right. Then we can put so, them Tell us a little bit more about that because I know you have developed a system and a total mm -hmm. approach for when women or men are looking for uh, new hair, right? Uh, hair replacement. So if I Wait. come see you, what would that look like? I can't wait till you do. <laughs> I, really well, need I should actually say, when I come see you. <laughs> what does that look like? We're training. We've uh, trained all the people around the country that have come to our university on how to do this kind of consultation. It is a holistic consultation. We spend over an hour, complimentary time, an hour, no rush, no expectation of anybody purchasing anything or making any decisions that day. In fact, they tell them up front, this is a relationship building time. We're investing in you, and I want you to understand, I don't want you to make a decision, because any decision today is made is probably gonna be emotional. I wanna help you make an educated decision so that that educated decision fits your life, your desires, and what you wanna do so that you look yourself and live your life. And so I go through a series of questions and allow them to ask as many dumb questions they say, which there aren't any, 
through that process. But we dig down deep to the causes. And then I start to chart out most likely what that chart is, whether it's female pattern hair loss, whether it's uh, alopecia, trichotillomania, you name it. We you know, at least locate the cause. It doesn't fix anything, but we help them understand it and I educate them a little further beyond maybe what they've heard or read or seen on uh, web you know, MD. Then from that point, we begin to talk about where do they see themselves? Mm -hmm. And that's where we start to go into the inner beauty. Mm -hmm. Well, I could never wear long hair. I could never wear short hair. I, all these things. And we start to just get through those weeds, through that jungle, and find the real desire in their heart. The Greek word thigma is a pattern like uh, a silhouette. Every woman, unlike a male, every woman understands when she sees her silhouette on someone else, she's not looking to look like that model. She'd like to maybe, but that's not what she's looking. She sees a familiar frame that she knows is right for her inside of herself. And so we try to bring that out. And once we get that out, then I put the pieces together with molds and castings and selecting of hair and colors and all those other parts and cutting and designing afterwards. That's so it's fun. first go in, find out what's blocking the beauty, help them see their beauty again, then produce the product, the frame, like Michelangelo said, to make that masterpiece that's already finished even more beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because like you said, you're not gonna look beautiful until you feel beautiful. So you really have to do that work. And I emphasize that so much. It's not about getting hair because yes, you can go get a wig, you can go get extensions, you can get anything, you know, just wear a hat every day. That's not going to do the trick. You can get in hair. It's not, it's not going to change how you feel and your experience of your life and how people experience you. It's only until you do that inner work that your life is going to shift. And you know, one of the greatest compliments I can hear my clients tell me, and I hear this so often, I know that the listening audience can relate to this. They say, once they've gotten to this point, they say, I finally feel like I no longer have to think about my hair. I no longer have to think about my hair loss. I don't have to think about the wind. But she's, they, they say, I can't believe how much I was using my brain and my, my conscious awareness and subconscious awareness about hair and the hair loss. And the reality is they have all that room now, all that space and all that energy now to live life and yeah. to look their very best at that. Yeah. You get to connect with people too, um, because I wouldn't connect with anybody. I would start a conversation and just think, was paying attention to see if they were looking at my hair. Yes. See if they were staring. And then the moment I saw their, their vision, you know, go somewhere else, I would change the subject. Correct. So I'm sure people thought I was, you know, not all there because my conversations were always all over the place because I, you know, was trying to distract people from looking at my hair. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that totally got in the way of my relationships. Because for a lot of people, well, two things. For some people, it was like, oh, no, she's too shy. She doesn't talk, which now you can tell I'm over that. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it was like I had walls because I didn't want to get close to people so they wouldn't look at me. You know, it's, it's just, yeah. Mm. it's so true it's so true so, and i think that that's important because that's what they're doing you're watching mm -hmm. someone's eyes rise from here to here and you are meltdown at that point yeah and you know something sure. i'm watching right now happen probably more in the alopecia but just just five days ago whatever it was one of my clients has been with me forever and and she's very successful in her life. I mean, very successful. Uh, if I mentioned her name, you'd know her. Uh, and the reality is, is that she'd been wearing hair though since her career began to blossom and no one knew. I mean, you know, believe it or not, no one knew. And, but it was always kind of a, a challenge because she didn't want anybody to know. Oh, the okay. other day I'm standing after she's gotten her service and I went to say hello to her, said I'm leaving to go on vacation. I hope you're you know, doing well. And she goes, Jeffrey, I'm ready to come out. And I wasn't sure where she was coming from with that statement. I said, what do you mean? She goes, I now feel like I've never felt before. Over the years, I've, I've tried to express to people that I had hair loss or I was wearing hair. And now I wear hair because I want to wear hair because it looks good. And I want to wear short sometimes and I want to wear long sometimes and I want to change my color. And I don't have to worry about trying to explain that. She says, I feel so confident now with who I am that I really feel I can come out. 
And you know, you've got alopecia patients that have, you know, can go with their wigs or not with their wigs. Even my kids from my Wigs for Kids organization are saying now they may go to school with and they may go without. Not everybody's going to be that point, but at least inside being able to be released as this young woman that I just shared with you is, that's really success to really be able to look in the mirror and love yourself mm -hmm. and to look at yourself and really mean, I love you and I care for you and you're beautiful and precious. It doesn't get any better than that. It just doesn't. Yeah. Yeah, and also I think it's really important to know, and I think that you can you should wear hair if that's what you want to do, right? But right. it has to be your choice. Right. And so right now I wear hair and I wear eyelash extensions because it makes me feel good and it's the lifestyle that I want to live. It's more about getting up in the morning and, and going and not having to spend two hours to make it look better or decent enough because I still have some bio hair but it's not enough for me to feel comfortable going out. So I think that the key difference to point out is ask yourself, why are you wearing this hair? Are you wearing hair because you're hiding? Are you wearing hair because it's something that you wanna do for yourself? Mm -hmm. um, because subconsciously when we're not sharing and I, and I can I speak for myself is that when I, when I first got hair, um, I was still hiding. I wasn't sharing about it. So it was my coping mechanism to wear it and not talk about it so I could pretend that it wasn't happening. Right. But that wears on you. You're, you're still not being yourself. You're still not being open. You're still not being authentic. So you still have all those walls again. So you, you cannot relate to people. It's not until you let the walls down and start sharing yourself authentically. Like you know, you're, it's yeah, interesting. Yeah, like your life starts changing. Because uh, you've read the book and Dr. Morgan Francis in the book tells a story, although you don't know it's her because she tells a story under a different name in the beginning because it was about her mom. And as she grew up, she would sit on the counter, she said, and watch her mother go through it over hour after hour trying to get her yes, here to yes. it, throw the brush, cry. And this was a kid. She never realized that that was the impression that led her to become a psychologist for people dealing with these image, body images. And she's renowned, she's on Fox now, and she's, every, you know, she's incredible. But in turn, that whole understanding came completely around when we did a major seminar and when we released my book on solutions for women's hair loss, and women's hair loss solutions. And we had 200 women in the room. Now, everybody in the room is either have hair thinning or they have hair, a hair replacement of some sort. But they're all sitting in a room with 200, and we had speakers and everything else. And I said, finally, is there anybody that would like to say anything from the audience? And her mother stands up, this beautiful blonde woman who does tennis and does all these things now. And she goes, I'm coming out. I want you to know. And she looks around. She goes, I'm wearing hair, and I feel great. Now, she never went without it to show anybody. She didn't need to. But she was able to get it out and really be very, very natural with that. But here's a point I would warn and alert all of the listening audience. Every woman especially, and man or child, are very vulnerable in finding the solution. Mm -hmm. It's important that you find the right solution for you. You need a consultant that will look at your hair. It could be integration, like we have hair systems that allow women to allow all their hair, whatever it is, a little bit or a lot, to come through the hair system. There are hair systems that can be attached for multiple weeks at a time. There are beautiful wigs that fit comfortably without being hot and sweaty that you can play volleyball in. There is so much more today, but it's still behind closed doors in the beauty industry. It's still been like it was way back when that, you know, you never, never even knew that this door was behind, uh, you know, hiding behind the situation. So I think that really you want to send that message out that, and you've gone through it, Find the right consultant, even if you've got to go three or four times. And sometimes that's really tough. That's really tough, but it's worth it if you find the right person. Yeah, and let's make this normal. You just, you just said the perfect words. I don't know why it's so behind closed doors. And that's my objective with the summit is to show everyone that there are so many resources. You that's don't right. need to hide. You don't need to be alone. There are so many things that you can do. So yes, yes. many. And on that, Jeff, Jeffrey, I know that you created something amazing for our audience. So now you can tell us about it. 
Mm -hmm. Well, we've got a beautiful ebook for everyone that is listening that signs up down below. Uh, and that ebook will take them through all the steps of the relationship of the issues of how to take care of the hair or the hair replacement or their extensions or whatever they have. But even better, we're going to take from whoever signs up for that free ebook, we're going to take and provide uh, a drawing to give them a free book of mine and provide them with that book. And in addition, we're gonna pull a second one, and this I didn't even tell you about, we're gonna pull a second one and provide them with You Are Beautiful package. It's the package we do our seminars and our programs and our coaching sessions to provide them with you know, mirror stick-ons so that they can read the affirmations, looking in the mirror, the cards that go along with all the things that they need so that it really will be someone being transformed. And I just love them to contact you and let you know when they've been transformed that because of you and because of this summit, the power that has caused their life to change and be transformed into beautiful, beautiful frames in their life. Jeffrey, that is so generous of you. You're legitimately bringing somebody else's life back. You're causing transformation. That's amazing. Thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure. And thank you for doing this. Oh, now, no one knows the work that goes behind these. I've done them. I am so proud of you. I am so excited as a new friendship. Uh, I want you to be a part of the Renewing You Network. I want you to come on regularly as a, as a contributor to some of the greatest things that we can do with helping men, women, and children, but especially the women to continue to look themselves, to be their, their best life that they could possibly be. And thank you for doing this. I'm saying it for the whole audience, and I'm saying it for me personally as well. Thank you, Jeffrey. It's, it's really my pleasure, and now it has become my life's work. So thank you so much to all of you that are, are creating the space for me to do this. And with that, I know we're going to have another amazing interview introducing uh, Wigs for Kids, and we're going to have two young children that are magnificent uh, sharing their own experience uh, working with you and the organization. So I cannot wait to show you that. It's going to be on the third week of the summit. So thank you, Jeffrey, again for accepting my invitation, and I can't wait to see you in a couple of weeks. Okay. We look forward to it. Thank you so much.